in many sports, scoring more points than you give up is the recipe for success. And that should certainly be the case in baseball, where a winning team will typically have greater runs scored over a season than runs that they allow. We're going to use runs and runs allowed to try to predict winning percentages of baseball teams. To do that, we're going to use data from Sean Lehman's data set um, on team performance. So to acquire the data we, we will need, we need to install the Lehman package. If you have not installed the Lehman package, you should run this first line of code. And then we're going to be using three different packages in this tutorial. Um, the Lehman package, uh, dplyr, and ggplot. So we make sure all three of those are loaded into our copies of, of our studio. If we issue this command, we'll get a printout of the 24 data frames in the Sean Lehman package. We're going to be concentrating in this tutorial on the team's data frame. So let's take a look at the head of teams and we actually have 48 different columns so some identify the year and the league and the team uh, we get the number of games won and lost we get a number of offensive data so at bats hits doubles triples and so forth we also get data for pitching performance earned runs complete games and so forth we also have other uh, information on the names of teams and their ballpark and so forth. For our purposes here, we don't need most of these columns, so I'm going to just take a subset of the columns for our analysis. And I'm going to do that using the dplyr package. So I'm going to set up a new data frame, I'll just call my data, and then we'll base that off of the team's data frame, and then I'll issue the piping operator and I'll first use the select command. So the columns that I want to retain are uh, year ID, league ID, team ID, wins, losses, runs, runs allowed. And for this example I'll just restrict myself to uh, a single year. So we're going to have year ID, we'll use 2014, and I'll just look at the American League. I'm going to use a double equal sign, and like so. Now if I run this, these two lines of code, my data should appear here, and you'll see that I only have 15 rows corresponding to the 15 American League teams, and I have seven variables, the ones that I wanted to retain. Now I'm going to use the mutate command to generate a simple predictor. I'm going to call it WPCT for winning percentage. And it's going to be equal to simply the ratio of R divided by the sum of R plus RA. The idea here is that if a team scores more runs than it gives up, then this quotient here will be greater than 0.5. A team that scores less runs than RA, this value will be less than 0.5. So it might be a useful predictor of the, the number of games that a team is likely to win. So I have that for my first entry in the mutate command. We'll simply run that and we see that my data now has eight variables. I'm going to add a couple more. Um, one is the expected number of wins. And to get that, I'm going to take my predicted winning percentage, and I'm going to multiply that by the number of wins plus losses. So I can't simply use 162, because not all teams played 162 games. Some games that were rained out were not, were not played. Um, so let's run this line, and we'll see that I now have nine variables. And let's take a look at the head of my data. We see that I have the predicted number of wins here, but they're given to five decimal places. And I don't really, I can't really have uh, portions of wins, so I need to uh, convert that to uh, integers. So I'm just going to use the the round function. So I'll add round there, and I need to add another parenthesis there.
And uh, finally, I'm going to calculate one other value here. And that's the difference between winds and expected winds. So now I'll run all of this code. And we'll take a look at my data. And uh, we'll actually look at the whole data frame but since it's only 15 rows. And what you can see is the difference between the expected number of wins and the actual number of wins. So for, for Baltimore, I was off by 8. Uh, for Boston, off by 5, and so forth. So it's a, a fair fit, but not, not a, a super fit. We can actually look at this graphically. So let's just do that quickly using ggplot. Use my data and we'll plot expected wins against wins. And we'll just use geo point geometry and I'll add a regression line to the graph. So we have a a relationship that's reasonably good, but uh, we still have a fair amount of residual error. Bill James modified this particular expression and suggested that instead of simply using r divided by r plus ra, we might square each of those terms. So we can do that quite simply just by going up here and adding carrot and the 2 there. So that gives us a, a different measure of winning percentage. He calls this method the Pythagorean win expectation, and it really has no relationship to the original Pythagorean theorem, which is used to predict the long side, the hypotenuse of a right triangle, where the hypotenuse squared, its length squared, is equal to the square of the other two sides. The only relationship between the Pythagorean run expectation and the original Pythagorean theorem is just that both have squares in the equations. But we'll run this now and we'll take a look at the data again and we have a, a, a better fit. How good is this fit? Well, we'll do a linear regression to give that, to assess that. I'm just going to call my linear regression mod and I'm just going to call the linear model and we're going to regress wins against expected wins and I need to specify my data frame so I've run that now if I simply call mod I get my y-intercept and my slope and if I call the summary command, I can find much more information. So I find that this regression is highly significant. My p-value for the, the slope is less than 0 0.001, so I have a highly significant regression here. And you can see that the multiple r-squared is 82, uh, 02, which indicates that 82% of the variation in the number of games won can be explained by simply knowing what runs allowed and runs were for that particular team. Let's go back to the, uh, the, the data proper and what we can see here is that we have a pretty good fit for uh, many of the teams that we were only off by one game for Baltimore, we were dead on for Boston. You can see Minnesota were expected to win uh, 74 games based on their runs and runs allowed, but they only won 70, so they underperformed. And Oakland should have won, according to this metric, 100 games based on their runs and runs allowed, but in fact they only won 88 games. But it's a better fit than we got with the simple expression we started with, with the R divided by R plus RA. Turns out that people have done uh, polynomial regressions to try to find the best value of the exponent to which r and ra are raised. And it turns out that 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 1.83, 
often will give a much better, well, a better fit anyway. So we can do that and see what we get here. So we'll run my data again with the altered exponent and uh, we'll just do the regression again. Take a look at the summary. And turns out in this case that the uh, R-square value was actually a little, a little bit lower than it was with 2. But I think most people are just going to gonna use the, the original Pythagorean win expectation and square um, the runs and runs allowed to get uh, the predictions that the difference between 1.83 and 2 as exponents is usually not particularly great.